Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Mary. We've made a wonderful job with the development of our last e-learning mobile solution. It was an interesting project. Yes, I've seen the result and discussed with the client as well and he told me that he was surprised by the first screen. The splash screen? Yeah. The splash screen for its mobile solution. The client told me that the title of its training doesn't appear anywhere and that its employees need to know what they're going to learn. Yeah. He's right. Anything appears because we've used the splash screen generated by default when we publish a Captivate project. I know, but we need to improve that. We need to deliver a professional splash screen like it's made for Android and Apple applications. Yeah, I know. Thank you, sir. Will you have a cup of coffee with me, Mary? No, thank you. So to solve the problem and offer a professional service to this client and the other ones, we are going to see how to customize a splash screen this morning. Oh, really? It's a good idea. Ready? Right now? Yes. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's look at this. Hello. In this video we are going to look at how to customize a splash screen for a mobile or tablet solution. The solution offered by Captivate by default is this one. The drawback as you can see it, is that it indicates anything of the project that is being loading. There is neither a training title, nor a company logo related to the client, nor an illustration of the training to come. At this step, it's an impersonal screen. So in this video, we are going to look at how to turn this screen into a customized one, like this one. But before beginning, let's define what a splash screen is. A splash screen is just a picture that you can see on almost every Android or Apple mobile application as soon as you launch it, like these examples. It's the first screen that appears while the program is loading. It graphically represents the project to come with its purpose. In some of application you have nothing to do, just to wait the next screen. In others, you are prompted to press a button, or to make a choice. Having defined that, let's look at now. What is the process of displaying a Captivate splash screen when we have developed a project? Actually, when you launch your responsive project there is not only one screen. Two screens appear before the first slide of your Captivate project. The first screen is this one. I call this screen the loading screen, due to its loading picture that it's displayed by default. Then afterwards the second screen is this one. The Captivate splash screen generated by default. Now, how to customize these two screens for a customer or a mobile learning solution that has been developed? Actually it depends on the screen. For the loading page, we can change and customize its background color. An animated loader. To make these changes, we proceed after publishing by modifying and entering the right values into the index.html file created. Regarding the splash screen by default, changes are both made from Captivate directly and after publishing. From Captivate we can insert the customized illustration we want and change the background color. Once done and after publishing, we can remove or hide the arrow picture and the gestures icon from the CSS file generated. But don't worry it's pretty easy. Now let's start this exercise which will consist in turning this splash screen by default into this customized one. To make a splash screen we need a project. Therefore I am going to use this simple responsive project I have used as teaching aid. The goal being to add a customized splash screen to it. To proceed correctly, I am going to begin with the changes that are possible to make within Captivate. Let's get started here, by inserting an illustration in order to customize this splash screen. To do so, I am going to the Preferences menu.
and in the project section, I select start and end. Then I untick autoplay. And from the browse button I am going to select the picture I prepared, and already put into the Captivate library. For information I have made this picture with Photoshop. Its dimensions are 284 pixels wide by 432 high. Once I've selected my picture, I valid with OK. OK my main picture is inserted. Below you can also see the preloader feature. It would have been useful to be able to use it, but it seems that it doesn't work with responsive projects. I've tried several times to insert other preloaders instead of the one by default, but they have never worked. Even the ones that are as examples into the relevant Captivate folder, don't work. So we will see how to insert a preloader differently in a few seconds after publishing. Now I have loaded the illustration. I am going to change the background color. This change is made from the defaults section. And the background color box. From a look and feel point of view it's important that the background color of the page remains the same than your illustration, if this one is not transparent. This is why I open Photoshop again. Select the eyedropper tool. Pick the background color of my illustration. Go and copy its color code. And once done I am going to paste it in Captivate in the color picker window. Into the relevant field. Once done I validate. Then I validate all my settings with OK again. Now that I've made all the changes that is was possible to make within Captivate, I am going to publish the file in order to see a first result, and then I will continue the remaining changes from the published source files. We will see the loading page afterwards but the changes I've made for this splash screen have well been taken into account. The illustration appears correctly, as well as the background that has the same color. Now it remains to hide on this page, this arrow, that it's not very beautiful over the illustration and the gestures picture that we cannot see here because I am using a computer, but on a mobile browser its presence. So now I am going to use and open the relevant CSS file that has been published, to hide these two pictures to finish the customization of this screen. Once published, we get all these files and folders for our project. And the path for the CSS file we need is assets folder css folder and then the cp library all css file that i open with an html editor into this file i search for the arrow picture that is usually at the beginning of the page it is there and its name is play icon i organize the line in order that you are able to see it in a better way And now, I am going to prevent this picture to be displayed, by removing this CSS class. I do the same from background till no repeat. I also remove the comma in order to have a correct line for the remaining CSS class. Now to see a first result, I save. Display the browser. And reload the page. 
as you can see the arrow picture doesn't appear anymore, it's a good point. But if I click to continue, it doesn't work. Let's go back to the CSS file to solve the problem. Actually the problem comes from the width and height values. They represent the interactive area where we can click to launch the project. And if it doesn't work, it is because their values are currently too small. Therefore, I am going to increase them in order they cover a larger part of the screen, around the illustration. I enter 400, which should be fine. Then I save again. and reload the page to check the new result. OK I click. And as you can see, it works now, the project is displaying. Now I am going to show you a very important point onto the splash screen, but I need to reload. The important point is that around the illustration we put here, a border appears when we are on a smartphone. It is not visible here because I am on a computer, but a border appears on smartphones around the illustration. So to avoid this very bad effect, you'll need to add a style into your CSS class. And the style to enter is, outline style, none. Another style you can enter if your responsive project is intended to be viewed on a computer as well, is, Cursor Pointer. This style will replace the arrow of your mouse into a hand on the interactive area, which is intuitively better. I save. and going to reload the page. We cannot see the border effect due to the computer view, but it has disappeared on a mobile view. Regarding the cursor of the mouse, this one has well changed, and the hand is now displayed on the interactive area. What it remains to remove within this screen, is the gestures icon located in the upper right corner of the screen that we cannot see here, but that will appear on a mobile view if don't remove it. So let's remove it. The gesture icon is here. It's a CSS class. And so that this icon disappears on a mobile view, I am going to add a CSS comment at the beginning and the end of its line. Et voila. This icon won't appear. I save. And reload. We cannot see here the result, but on a smartphone. The result is like this one. Now that this page is completely customized, I am going to customize the loading page. by changing its background color and animated loader. These changes are made from the index file. So I go to the root of my project, 
and open this file as I did it with the CSS file. The changes are pretty easy here. The background color code is here. And the picture of the loader there. As background color code, I exactly enter the same code that I entered for my splash screen because from a look and feel point of view, it is better to have the same color on both screens. Now for the loader, I remove the existing one. And type the name of one I've made and put in the same folder. Okay. When everything is fine, I save. And going to check out the result. I reload the page. And, as you have seen my new animated loader and background color, have well been taken into account in my loading page. I show you it again. Now to summarize. I have showed you how to customize this splash screen by default. The loading page as well. In order to get a final result like this one on a real smartphone or tablet. Now we've seen all the steps to make a splash screen let's see some tips before finishing this video. My tips will be mainly around the illustration used as splash screen. First, it's better to make this illustration in a vectorial format because if users enlarge the screen, they will lose in quality. It is also better to design it with a transparent background as much as possible. About its size, don't design it with a height too high because it would be cropped in landscape mode and users wouldn't see it entirely. However, if you have CSS skills or are used to working with an HTML developer you can add media queries into the CSS file we've seen in order to get different displays and illustrations for landscape modes. Last, don't forget to put something inviting your users to click either with a text or an explicit picture, otherwise some will believe that the project will automatically launch and will wait. This video is now finished. I hope you've learned something and that you'll design wonderful and professional splash screens for your customers and projects, like we made it for Android and Apple mobile applications.